What's the Risk, hosted by myself, Daniel Crow, and Peter Mansell, founder of Mansell Financial Group, a financial advice business he founded in 1980. This is a simple video series we hope investors can use to better understand index and portfolio performance, along with addressing some investment questions and dilemmas. This episode is on the S&P ASX 300 A-REIT index, total return. Some people would know the ETF that seeks to track the return of this index as Vanguard's VAP or VAP, and it invests in property securities listed on the ASX across retail, office space, industrial, and diversified REITs. So Your Investment Philosophy, a book we wrote, shameless plug, available at Amazon. Disclaimer, please pause and read. Suffice to say our intent is educational and not rendering financial advice. Uh, don't make us tap to sign. These are simple concepts. We'd like investors to better understand performance in the short or long term so they can make informed decisions. Periodic performance. Obviously, you wouldn't be too unhappy with that, but the 20-year figure and the three-year figure captures some of the worst performing periods, which we'll talk about. And you have to expect there will be volatility with an index like this. At one point, uh, a couple of years back, it only had 23 holdings. It currently has 33, and Goodman Group and Centre Group make up 50% of the index. So what, what are your opinions on, on REITs, Peter? For many investors, this is the only real way that they can gain access to large commercial property, large industrial property, large retail property. Most Australians' biggest investment in property through their lifetime will be their own family home, uh, a few a much smaller number will get the opportunity to invest in smaller scale industrial and commercial property. But for most investors, this is the only way to actually get access to large investments of a commercial nature, given that most people don't have the capital to uh, buy those sort of properties in their own names. So I think it's definitely got a role in client portfolios. And if an investor is genuinely patient, and applies the right time frame to investing in listed property securities, such as the A-REIT index does, then the returns are there. You know, the evidence on the screen, self-explanatory, a 9.6 per annum return. But it's important to remember, along the way, there are going to be some pretty significant dips and bumps, particularly when the stock exchange decides it's time to retrace previous gains. Growth of wealth. So quite a dramatic plunge there during the GFC and uh, property trust briefs were punished during that period due to gearing and another, there was another sharp plunge during COVID when we didn't think anyone would ever be in an office again. Another further dip there when rates started increasing more recently, but you can offer a little bit of perspective on the run up to the GFC, Peter. Uh, the, the period that's showing there from 1999 through till just prior to the GFC was an unprecedented period where interest rates were on deposits and bonds and the like were really falling quite quickly and, and the falls had been substantial. And a lot of investors here in Australia were sold listed property trusts that were running with yields of around 6 to 7% net as an alternative to fixed income securities. Now, these were investors that weren't really property investors. They weren't really share market investors. They were investors that were looking for safe investments that paid regular income. A-REITs might pay regular income, but they're by no means a safe investment. And as soon as the share market started to show signs of falling in the GFC, the people that were invested in listed property trusts through the A-REIT index were massive sellers. And as you can see, the index actually fell 75%. Um, very few people actually thought about the big gains before that catastrophic fall. And then you can see after the GFC concludes, people start to get excited again about A-REITs. Why? Because again, the yield, albeit from a much lower price point, the yields were up around 5 6 7% and up the index went again. Of course, COVID hit, as you rightly pointed out, and those that were invested in property uh, that was listed on the stock exchange certainly panicked, much the same as share market investors. And again, as you point out, when uh, late in the piece towards the end of the chart, interest rates start to rise and people decide, well, hang on, I can actually get 5% now from my term deposits and the like, so I won't bother putting up with the volatility of property. Most of the big gains there and big falls were a reaction to the yields being available on other securities, either falling or rising as the case may be. In my opinion, 
a lot of the investors within the A REIT market at times have been the wrong investors. So range returns on the best returns. There's some very strong numbers, and you don't often see a five year annualised return better than a three year. But I guess it's one of those uh, anomalies that data does tend to kick up from time to time. Yeah, of course. Look, the best five year period obviously starts from a low point, and it must have some pretty significant gains thereafter. Um, that can happen with any data series. Uh, but when you look out to the longer periods of time, you know, at 20 years and you see the range, you know, below the mean and the range above the mean being very similar, uh, it, it's a pretty normal distribution subject to the odd anomaly along the way, uh, which can happen. Uh, when you look at the returns on listed property, my recommendation is don't look at anything less than 20 years you may or may not look at a very good or a very poor result if you're looking much shorter than that. A rolling annual returns, and this is to underline why those negatives were so strong in the previous slide. From 1982 until the GFC, there are only 18 negative returns out of 300. So the GFC must have been one hell of a shock to hold as a listed property in Australia. The property has been the darling asset class of Australian investors, you know, since federation and probably even before that people across the community generally have a very positive view about property but it's important to recognize too that property assets aren't always in favor um, just before this time series starts in in 1980 through to 1981 property values fell significantly uh, across the community, especially in the commercial, industrial uh, and retail sectors. And the same thing happened in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Now, there weren't massive falls, as you can see, through the GFC as represented by this index. Uh, but it is important for investors to understand that major property markets, not just that which is listed on the stock exchange, but major property markets tend to go through big downward cycles somewhere between every 10 to 20 years and, and frequently around the 15-year mark. And that's just the economic cycle and the demand for property that at times is very high and occasionally it's not. The return, the return series here just shows the chances of picking a, a negative result and obviously over very short periods, not unlike the stock market, the listed property market, goes down in value a bit over one third of the time. It goes up in value a bit over two thirds of the time. Over three months, it gets to about a 70-30 ratio. Over one year, it's about one in six are negative returns. Three and five years are about one in nine. And by the time you get out to a 10-year time frame, the chances of a negative result historically has been under 2%. So it is truthfully a fairly reliable asset class, provided you're willing to hold it for a significant length of time. On the basis of this chart, you'd say that was 10 years. My personal view is it's probably more like 20. Largest fall in time in recovery, so 107 months and the, the fall is a bit of a doozy. You mentioned 75% there before. This is only monthly, so intra Intra month, it probably was seventy five percent, but we're only we're not getting all the extremities with a monthly series. But this may never happen again. But investors shouldn't discount these types of occurrences. At the same stage, if you were buying at the bottom, it was a pretty nice recovery. I think there's a couple of salutary lessons in this chart. Firstly, uh, the point you made: someone that was courageous enough to buy after the price had fallen seventy percent was in for one heck of a pleasant surprise in the ensuing eight years. The second significant lesson in this is to me, what the chart looked like before the left-hand side of the chart here starts. There were, from 1999 through to 2007, just colossal gains. They really were. We're talking about, you know, sort of four times the value in some seven years. So, you know, a 70% fall, whilst here looks absolutely catastrophic. If you looked at the chart for seven years prior, you can basically just, just put a nice smooth line through the whole period and you've got a big excess return to start with, followed by an overcorrection uh, at the GFC. And by the time you add the two periods together, actually looks quite normal. And risk return or the efficient frontier, uh, we obviously had to extend it out against previous series reviews. I think we, we might have stopped at 16. We had to go out to 18 here because of the 
REITs have been more volatile than their other equity type counterparts. We we're not using listed property anymore, are we, in our um portfolios, are we, Peter? Our portfolios actually hold a market weight of listed property as it relates to the whole of the Australian share market index and similarly globally. We've taken the view that listed property is just another asset of stock markets. And as a result, we should actually include it at that market weighting and that's all. So we do include it, but only to the extent that investors more broadly include property across their uh, listed equity market portfolios worldwide. So it's viewed more a bit more like a thematic, I guess, now. And if you've, if you've got it in a broad market index, that's enough. Absolutely. And sources and descriptions of data. Ian, thanks for your time. Thanks again. Bye for now.